Okay. Um, it starts out here by noting that uh, a lot of the uh, uh, black artists in America have sort of uh, uh, become rather lazy in that they uh, perform nothing but harmless love songs and, and dance music, mm -hmm. uh, whereas you guys have uh, taken somewhat more of an aggressive stance in that you uh, try to get across messages and uh, uh, also I mean, create... There are other artists that are doing that, but you're not hearing a lot about it. Uh huh. Well, that's that's actually part of the question there. Who who do you consider a, a contemporary in that respect? Well, I mean, there's Tracy Chapman, of course. You know, there are other bands that don't don't get the same kind of notoriety that that we might. You know, that aren't even signed. Uh huh. There's a band here in New York called Bluesland. Uh huh. Um. When Mike Hill is the leader. And, um, he's doing his version of Urban Blues. Um, I mean, who else? I mean, there's so many. It's, it's very difficult to say who isn't Tackhead. You know, all, there are lots of bands that are doing it. But, uh, I mean, doesn't your, wouldn't your success uh, spur a lot of record companies to, to look for that same combination of, uh, you know, message, rock, black guys? Yeah, sometimes, I mean, there's still, I think the, the industry is still waiting to see whether this is just a fluke or whether we're actually serious about it. And, um, you know, that, that's why you don't see it. If you haven't seen a flood of other right, but I, um, rock bands with black members. You know, that you, you will find bands with mixed members or something like that, but they have yet to see anything where everybody the whole band is black I don't, I don't think the industry the industry is still kind of pensive on that to see if, whether, whether it's going to work or not based on the uh, response to uh, Time's Up which is, of course is, is still very limited at this time uh, mm -hmm. w w what do you think uh, do, do, have people uh, uh, eschewed the idea of you guys as a fluke I think this kind of proves to us at least that, that we have the ability to to do more than just than just what you heard on Vivid, just to show that we have a lot more in our repertoire of things that we do in terms of being a rock band. Mm -hmm. um, actually, there was uh, another question hooked on to the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess the guy expected you to list the uh, ver names of various bands, and then it says here, uh, why have uh, so many of these bands uh, uh, appeared on the scene, signed or unsigned? Well, I mean, they're, they're, they come out of a out of a sense that that there are things there are things going on in the world, and they have and they're talking they want to talk about what's going on in their in, in their world. You know, mm -hmm. Just, I mean, it, it 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 comes out of a reaction of, of the situations that they live in, as in, as most music is. It's either a, a reflection of them of what they want or a fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know. Hmm. How about your in your own particular case? When did you uh, uh, find that music was a viable means of uh, expressing that reaction? Well, I don't know any uh, the things that I fantasize about. The things that I want. You know, and the things. I mean, we t we talk about things that we'd like to see, and like to like to deal with, and like to have. But we deal with them on a realistic terms, and and that's the only way that 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 music becomes truthful, you know. Mm -hmm. so that's the only way that that we want to speak truthfully about how about what it is we're going through, mm -hmm. and you know, and that and music music was was a means by which we could do that. Mm -hmm. How about in your own particular case? When did you first start uh, playing music? I've been singing ever since I've been a kid. Um, since I was about eight or nine years old. Uh huh. How about uh, in a band? It's about the same, you know. We've all been. Everyone, you know, like Muzz and Will and myself, all had older brothers that were doing the same things, you know. And they were like the local heroes, the neighborhood heroes, in that particular expertise. Whereas, you know, Will's brother was a, was a drummer of the block, and 
Muzzy's brother was older brother was the bass player of the block and my brother was like the singer of the neighborhood so we li- had to live up to those expectations and what they and what that was all about um you know we you know and and carry it on whereas Vernon was just was, was influenced by, by I believe it was a, a relative of his who had given him a guitar as an and at and he just liked the way it sounded and decided to keep playing it. Were you in a band before we were joining Living Color? No, I wasn't. But the rest, of everybody else was. They were gigging professionally. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in basically like trying to start bands, and, and I was never in a. I was always in like singing groups that never really got out of the like garage basement stage. Never really got a gig. Mm. Well, what, what sort of style uh, were you doing? You know, like stylistic um, Motown stuff. So Living Color was a real departure from the styles you had actually been, been singing. Actually, it was exactly what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. Well, that was a de- departure. It was exactly what I needed, what, I, what I've been, always wanted to do all my life. Uh-huh. Being a band that that said something in that was I heard black people saying what they had to say, and it was a rock band. Uh-huh. Were you always a fan of rock music? Yes, I was. Right. I mean, even from the earliest, the earliest conception of rock music, that a la doo music, and stuff from the Platters and the Kleptones and the Penguins. You know, the early reference, black, uh, early reference to rock and roll, uh-huh. and and progressed forward and backward at the same time. Whereas I, I wanted to find out where that came from, and also wanted to find out where it was going. So I found that about. Fats Waller and Bessie Smith and, and and at the same time that I was listening to Chuck Berry and Fats Domino and Little Richard and also listening to Hendrix and Cream and Foghat and Supply Stone and then Parliament of Funkadelic and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. How old are you right now? 25. 25. So if you started when you were 8, 8 years older, so that would be 17 years ago in, in 73? Right. Well, um, I mean, even younger than that, when I was I was singing in church and stuff like that, uh-huh. I wasn't gigging professionally or anything like that. But I was like singing when I was young, really young. So, so you're actually uh, a singer before you were a fan, huh? Right. I, I, I was actually a singer because I, I I could I would listen to watch Ed Sullivan or something and like think I could imitate. Like when the Jacksons were on Ed Sullivan, uh, that's all I did for about a month. <laughs> So they, 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 they were your earliest heroes then? I mean, those, that, that's my earliest recollection of singing. Uh-huh. But, you know, my early earlier heroes were like Otis Redding and Sam Cooke and Jackie Wilson, actually. Mm-hmm. I, I suppose it, it changes as you get, as you get older. When, at what point did you uh, discover sort of a, a, I guess you would call a, a mentor? And uh, who was it? I didn't have any one particular person that was my mentor, but, you know, I listened to everything and anything I can get my hands on, you know. Are you, um, are you still that way? That I, I'm sorry? Are you still that way? Yeah. You know, I never let, I don't limit myself to that, you know, trying not to make, um, not to, not to limit my, my thinking to that, you know, to, to one person. Hmm. You're credited uh, with having a, appeared in Platoon. Mm-hmm. Um, what what was your role in that? I played Francis, which was um, one of the privates. Is, is um, his notable thing was that he stabs himself at the end of the film. Stabs uh-huh. himself in the leg to get out. Oh, I see. Uh huh. How did you get that role? I was an actor before I got in the band. Hmm. And um working as an actor and I just support and I got the part is that right mm-hmm. you were working out of LA then mm-hmm. and New York oh well, did, did you appear in any other films mm-hmm. that didn't that was your first and last major role exactly <laughs> you hadn't thought about uh, continuing on as an actor uh, I'd like to I'd hope to yes uh, so it's still something that's sort of on the back burner yeah you know fan takes priority at you find yourself uh, slipping slipping into a uh, an actor's uh, persona when on stage, or is it, is it a completely different thing? 
No, I mean it, it's a part of what I, what I am. Uh, my 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 training as an actor is to take as much as yourself on stage as possible, because that makes it a lot more real for you and the audience. Hmm. Uh, there's a question here about the music and uh, how it got to be the way it is. Um, is it something that was just sort of uh, spontaneously uh, born out of? Uh, uh, playing sessions and, uh, and and doing live work and stuff, or was it something based more on a lot of research and analysis? Uh, something a lot more. It was more based out of, uh, on playing. When we got together, that's what it sounded like. Uh huh. When when the when the four of us plugged in, walked up to a microphone, that's what it sounded like. No no calculate nothing calculating about it. Mm -hmm. How about the, how about now? the same way that's what we do we play uh huh you know when we get together we play do you ever think of like uh, uh, the kind of uh, feedback you had uh, from before does, does that uh, account for any of the uh, decision making uh, process I'm sorry when like uh, putting together material do you ever uh, consider the, the sort of feedback you've had so far no not at all we play what we feel what feels good to us basically we don't look for any, we don't do it for anyone else at the, when it's at the creative stage, but for ourselves, or if, depending on what it's about, and then, or, or the concerns that we have. If, it, if the music sounds good, then that's, what our, that's our number one criteria. Do you ever worry about chart success? Not really, no. I think what success to us is, is is audience satisfaction, not um, not record sales. You know, if the people are, are dig the music, whether they buy them, buy it or not, if they like it, they like it. Judging from the way the records sound, it seems like you guys uh, are more of a live band. Is is that is, is 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 it fair to say you guys are more of a live band? Yeah, that's what we are. Uh huh. Do you, do you spend a lot of time in the? Have you spent a lot of time in the studios uh, recording? Not really. I mean, this re last record took about three months to do. Or one month was um, recording about 19 songs. Um, one month was overdubs, and one month was just mixing. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like did it really quickly. At the same time, we were we were in pre-production January. So and the, and we finished the record in May. So what we once we got in, we got into into getting the music together and recording this took very quick. Mm -hmm. We're led to believe that uh, Vernon is more or less the leader of the uh, of, of the outfit. Uh, is that the same on stage as in the studio? No, I mean we are all basically individuals of the band. Vernon is, represents us in many cases because most people like to speak to Vernon. <laughs> he is a big leader. Why do most people like to speak to Vernon? Vernon has a, has a longer track record than we People don't know about him before they knew about us. Before they knew about the band, they knew about Vernon Reed. Mm -hmm. So, they were more accustomed to knowing, to talking to him. Hmm, hmm. But otherwise, it's uh, it's, it's a democracy uh, uh, on stage and off. Very much so. Hmm. Um, reading again here from the list of questions, it says uh, that you know though you guys have uh, appeared on the scene like a bolt from the blue. Um, in the final al analysis, you're just sort of uh, an unorthodox uh, four four piece uh, rock and roll band. Right. Uh, I mean, we do what we do. It, it, we have, I mean, we play, we play hard, we, we play our music, that, you know, this is the way it comes out, this is our voice, how we express our, that's all it is, which is a rock and roll band, like any other rock and roll band. Uh, the, the gist of the question here was, uh, you know, do, do, you, do you ever feel any sort of limitations uh, with regard to that, uh, the format? The, the, the no, not at all. Format? I mean, rock and roll for the most part is a is a music 
is a musical art form that, that ranges, that goes from from the blues to heavy metal to to like or, orchestral music. I mean, it, it's, its limits are endless. There's nothing that, it, that we cannot do within the medium of rock and roll, and especially the way we play rock and roll. It can be jazz, it can be, it can be anything, you know, but it's still rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a question here on, uh, on the new album. Uh, you'll have to forgive me for my ignorance. I haven't had a chance to hear it yet. Uh -huh. But uh, the question reads that uh, a lot of the, uh, the material uh, uh, in Times Up uh, deals with serious messages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, w did you plan on making sort of a, a, a concept uh, album in that respect, uh, or did just a lot of ser uh, message songs uh, happen to come together? Well, um, we compiled about 15 pieces of music that express us as we are now. Our, con our likes, our dislikes, the things that we see and the things that we'd like to see. Um, and if that's a concept, then, that, that's what it, then that's what it is. But for the most part, it's just us expressing ourselves, playing the way we do at this point in time. You talk about... Uh uh, you guys uh, discussing what you'd like to see happen. I mean, do, do, do you look, do you see music as uh, a means of uh, affecting change? Then At, we see anything as a means of affecting change. What, what affects change most is is an individual, is one's ability to make a change within themselves and kind of making a change in the world around them. Um, if music is a motivator of that, then. I guess that the answer would be yes. Mm -hmm. Do you think people have been uh, affected in that way by your music so far? I would like to hope so. There's, there's only one way to find out is by asking them. Uh huh. I mean, do, but people must like write to you and stuff. Yeah, we get when we get letters and stuff. We hear about how it, how things have changed in their life since they've heard Vivid or whatever, and how they see things slightly differently because of it. Hmm. Kind of makes me very happy to know that that what we're saying makes it makes a difference in this world, and how we're making a positive change in this world. Hmm. Kind By of our actions. Oh, pardon me. By our actions, we're making a positive change. Mm -hmm. By by your actions being your, what you're, you're setting an example, or uh, or, or, or or because or the thing or, or setting up a way that people can think for themselves. Hmm. Um, kind of an abstract question, but what, what do you think your contribution to the overall scene has been? Just another kick-ass rock and roll band. Hmm. So not, not much different from uh, the kick-ass rock and roll bands that have uh, appeared thus far? Yeah, I mean, if we made a difference in that, we have made people see things that they hadn't seen before or heard things in a different way. Do you think you've uh, um, uh, improved things at all for, for, for blacks in America? I think that only people that can change things for blacks in America are blacks in America. Um, I don't think we, we, we're going to change things. I mean, we're just one band. Only people they have to make. There has to be a change made for, for for themselves. You know, I can't. I can't force anybody to, to, to do anything. But if they want to change something, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. where, where do you come from, personally? I'm from Brooklyn. Uh huh. Did you did, did, did you come from a, a a predominantly black part of Brooklyn? Mm hmm. Actually. There, there's a big black pot where I come from in, in central Brooklyn. There is a, a, uh, a big black, Hispanic, um, Asian, and 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 European Jewish community as well in my neighborhood. So it, you, it was kind of a melting pot then? Pretty much so, yeah. But the, the were, were very uh, solid lines drawn like between various races and nationalities? Not particularly, no. So uh, you've always been exposed to uh, people of all kinds, then, huh? Uh-huh. Living in New York, you can't help but, be, but, that, but have that happen. 
But then again, you have a lot of parts of New York that are, you know, predominantly black. Yeah, there, there are lots of parts of New York that are predominantly white as well. Uh-huh. But um, if, you de- if you live in New York City, you cannot help but deal with other people. Uh-huh. So I, I guess having come from New York, uh, that's just sort of had uh, an inherent effect on, uh, on your attitude towards life and, and therefore uh, the, the type of messages you try to uh, get across in your music. Right. Um, there's a question here that uh, deals with a couple of, uh, of rap a- a- acts as of late here. Um, oh, um, Public Enemies, uh, Fear of right. a Black Planet, and Boogie right. Down Productions, uh, Edutainment. Right. Um, listening to the, the, the uh, guy who wrote the questions here, he notes mm-hmm. that the listening to these... Uh, there seems to uh, be sort of a, a, a dialogue uh, established between, you know, the performer and the audience. Correct. Um, is that something you envy? Do you think those guys are uh, achieving something that uh, you haven't been able to achieve so far? No, not at all. I think we all are doing it. Uh-huh. Not only us, but um, bands like us, Public Enemy, Boogie Down Productions, you know, um, Tracy Chapman, um, you too. They, uh, that's that's the whole appeal of a band is that they reach an audience and that they they talk to an audience. Um, we are reach we reach people just as much as any other band reaches people. Mm-hmm. That that's what it all, all boils down to: uh, being able to communicate with the audience, you know. Exactly. Uh, giving them something they can sort of uh, feel from the heart. Mm-hmm. But that's something that they can understand. Uh-huh. In a language or, or in a medium that, that speaks clearly to them. Uh huh. The acts you just mentioned are all sort of recent, or at least have you know have only only come onto the scene say uh, as far back as ten years ago. Uh, right. You know, like you too. Do you think that acts like that uh, have a long lifespan? Do they, do they last a long time? I think bands that that talk about something other than the immediate. And, th- and and think ahead do I mean those are the ba- how many bands do you do you remember that didn't that didn't say much about anything that was relevant I mean do you, do you remember anything that that um that the, a band like um I don't know that that um I'm to think of, of a band that that is no longer around today. Mm-hmm. You know, but that kind of situation, where there's not that where, where they didn't have much to say, or they didn't say much of anything, and they would they were went by the wayside because of people who were disinterested in them because they weren't speaking to them. They're speaking to, evidently not speaking in a language that was clear to them. Mm-hmm. But you, you think that your uh, audience has no trouble understanding your language? But we would like to hope so. Uh-huh. We won't know until it happens, until we see it. So uh-huh. Until we re- reach out, we go out to an audience and talk to them. It seems like one of the, uh, one of the factions that uh, spends a lot of time uh, uh, you know, observing you and, and writing about you and... Uh, you know, making notes on you. Are the people who are, you know, sort of concerned about uh, the so-called purity of black music, um, you know, they, they, they talk about uh, black artists selling out or, uh, you know, having been sort of uh, ill-affected by, uh, by uh, you know, their surroundings and, and therefore losing the purity. Um, how do you respond to that criticism? That most people who know music know that black music encompasses a whole lot of things from rock to reggae you know and what we're what we're doing and what we're playing is in keeping with traditions of black music those who do not know that are ignorant to the fact mm-hmm. so you feel that what you're doing is, is right right along the lines of uh, those those traditions then very much so yes uh-huh. It, I, I think one thing that throws people off is that there's really no other band to uh, to compare you guys with stylistically, at least on the surface. Right. I mean, 
that's because we are our own band. We are four individuals who play the way we play. And a band like Fishbone, for example, plays the way they play because it's where, where they come from and what they've been set up to do. Um, a band like, you know, Bad Brain comes across differently. You know, we're, we're, or, or a band like 247 Spy is a completely different animal than what, what we are. You know, and there's no comparison because we, there's a different, different criteria for the way we play and the way they play. Uh, this is a question on, on your audience. Mm -hmm. um, the, the guy here notes that uh, there, there are probably a lot of people in your audience who just see you guys as sort of, um, you know, he, 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 he might just sort of uh, uh, get his frustration out of the system when he watches you, but uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you, you don't leave a, 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 a lasting impression on him. Um, you're sort of a... If we didn't leave a lasting impression on them, why would they come back? Mm -hmm. so you, you, know, you, you, if, 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 that, if that's the case, the proof, the proof of the, in the pudding is whether they come back or not. Uh huh. And if they don't, if they, if, if all they do is get rid of their frustrations and that's it, and they don't, don't want to deal with it ever again, then that's, that, that, that's, that's okay. But we have people who come back time and time again. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, no, uh, let's see. I have to read these questions in Japanese, so sorry, it takes me a little bit of time right. sometimes to, okay. to, to come up with uh, the English. Uh, th th there are a lot of artists who, like, uh, are not very uh, concerned about what goes on in society and are more concerned about just creating music that, that sounds mm -hmm. good. Um, like for example, uh, a good example would be like uh, the the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you think artists like that? They have their place. Um, they have. I mean, some sometimes you feel like dealing with that. Sometimes you don't. It, it really depends. Mm -hmm. it, it's your own. That's your, that, that's, that's your own decision when buying or listening to music. Why do you think that uh, you guys would be more concerned with society where, say, a Brian Wilson wouldn't? I think Brian Wilson is very much concerned with society. He writes lots of songs that that are concerned that have a lot to do with that. But um, but those are not the songs that you that you most rec you don't recognize him about re recognize that about him. Uh huh. Um, but there are other things. Mm, mm. There are other things that he's, he he has done. Uh huh. I, I I think the basic question would be how why are you guys more concerned with society, whereas a lot of artists seem to be uh, rather to society. Are that's, that's the we want to talk about. The, we speak. We want to speak about the truth and deal with the truth. And when if we want to ha talk about having a good time, we will. We haven't decided to do that just yet. Hmm. The uh, interviewer here notes uh, he, he calls your music uh, uh, black rebel music. And, uh -huh. uh, he says a lot of your uh, contemporaries would uh, uh, sing about Africa or at least add something about Africa to the lyrics or something. Whereas uh -huh. you guys, uh, it, it seems to be conspicuously absent from your lyrics. Uh, how's that? We d it, it doesn't need to be said because... If, if it needs to be said, we'll say it. At this present time, we it, we don't feel like talk. We don't feel like saying it. We talk about Africa all the time. We don't we don't use the word Africa. So, you know, we don't have to say Africa in order for me to be talking about Africa. You know, hmm. I don't have to be talking about. I, I don't have to say black man in order to be talking about a black man. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I don't want to insult. I don't, wouldn't insult your intelligence by saying this. Mm -hmm. Is it really relevant anymore to, to, to talk about Africa? I think it, you should be aware as, uh, as much of your heritage and where you've come from, much as in, as anyone else would. You know, and always have it 
have it in your mind and always know what it's about. Uh huh. No, the reason I ask that is, I mean, you know, like uh, my mother was born in Germany, but <laughs> I don't talk about Germany, and nobody points the finger at me and says you never talk about Germany. Is it? Uh, I, I understand, but I mean, for for people who are for people who have been denied that that in their lives, <clears throat> have denied their history and their culture, it's very important that 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 that, that is said. Mm-hmm. So you think you've been denied your history and your culture? You don't. I just want to get your opinions. I, I think I would agree, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, it, it, it's kind of obvious. If you take a look at American history, the, the importance and the roles of, of, of black people and, and their and their history starts on a slave ship. It doesn't start after, it doesn't start before them. And there's a rich and long history that has happened in the in this in their culture long before the existence of an, of America. Mm-hmm. That is completely denied of of black people. It denied meaning that like it's not ri- written about in the textbooks. Exactly. Uh huh. Have you made an effort at uh, acquainting yourself with that history? Very much so. Just just by reading on your own? Yes. Uh-huh. Because it's not being handed. Okay. Um, let's see, back to the list here. Uh, there's only a couple more questions to go, by the way. Okay, no problem. Um, the, 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 the track Eldest is Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, this would appear to be sort of an indictment of, uh, of mistaken perceptions and, 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 and myths, uh, various myths in rock and roll. Right. Um, Again, yeah. whereas the hist- where, where the history books are talking about rock and roll and, and, the, and the role of black people in rock and roll is, is denied of them. Hmm. Well, uh, again, could you elaborate a little bit more on this? Well, I mean, to, to call Elvis the king of rock and roll is a misnomer. Uh-huh. If, that, if, if Elvis was the king of rock and roll, uh, uh, that being the he invented or he was the, the quintessential rock and roll musician, then where was Little Richard? Mm-hmm. Where is Chuck Berry? Where is Fats Domino? Um, you know, where are these people that... that and, and at the same time that Elvis was, in, was around... And before Elvis was around, was doing the same thing, the same way, if not better. Uh huh. So you mean like stylistically, uh, credit hasn't been given where credit's due. Exactly. And we're not did not we're not saying that Elvis was a bad person. Mm-hmm. Elvis is. El, El, we we would ask it that you respect the dead. Uh huh. Me- meaning the dead other than Elvis. Well, no, respect Elvis as being dead. <laughs> you know, respect his, respect his death and not to make a mockery of his death by saying he's, that he, you saw him at the shopping mall or at, or at the convenience store. Uh-huh. There are two things that work in that song. That sort of, uh, one, you're, you're pointing the finger at myth makers, and the other is that you're uh, pointing the finger at uh, those who make a mockery of, of Elvis' death. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's see, here's a, ra- a rather general question. Uh, over the last two or three years, what one event have you been the most pleased with and what one event have you been the most angry about? Hmm. What has made you the happiest, let's put it that way. What's made me the happiest? Yeah, the, the one event that's, that's made you the happiest. I don't think w- there's any one event, but I think that the advent of people thinking on their own and not adhering to conformity something I'm very happy about and the opposite is what I'm not happy about uh uh-huh. um, but I mean the thing is that's been going on for like thousands of years now <laughs> yeah but I mean in the past ten years you haven't seen much of that you haven't seen as much as people like blindly following you mean more, more, well, peop- more you, people you've been seeing people blindly follow for the past ten years and, and there's a change coming along now. Hmm. Well, what do you, 
what do you think uh, is accounting for this change? I think it's seeing that that you, know, that you cannot rely on anyone but yourself to make a change in this world. And that the people are not going to make the change for you. Uh -huh. and, and why is this coming about now? What what, what are the forces that are uh, are leading to this? I don't know. I, I, I it, it's very difficult to say what exactly. There's not one thing that can pinpoint it. I think it's a cyclical sort of thing. Um, and at this point in time, it's it's the time to change. Um, one last question here. Uh, the 60s, uh, this is the, the observation of the uh, interviewer, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the rock and roll move, movement in the 60s uh, uh -huh. seemed to... Uh, uh, talk a lot about change and stuff, but you know, no revolution ever really occurred. Uh, no big right. changes occurred. Um, how about uh, you know, it, it, it's over 20 years later, um, you guys are are singing about revolution. Uh, is, do you have any any real cause for singing about revolution, or any any reason to be optimistic about that? Well, it looks as though, and the only way that a, that a constant that a, a lasting change is going to come about is through revolution, bloody or bloodless. Is there has to be a drastic change, something drastic that has to happen in order for a lasting change to come about. And if that's the case, then somebody needs, it needs to be said by someone. Or, what, a group of, or a group of people, at least. What are the changes that should occur? Well, just individualism and talking about and, and dealing with and making a, a change within yourself for as an individual in order to make in order for change to occur it has to come inward and, and work its way outward not the other way around uh huh but what you're talking about is something more philosophically based whereas revolution tends to be uh, politically motivated well, revolution no, it doesn't start with with, with it, revolution starts inward not outward uh -huh. it, has to, it, has, it comes from an idea. It's an ide ideology that starts a revolution, not a not not an action. You know, all actions start with a thought. Uh huh. But uh, you know, you you talk about there being a sort of uh, rampant blind faith. But what what do you think is the the most uh, noticeable manifestation of it? Where, where, where do you see this? Uh, Reaganomics. Reaganomics. Mm-hmm. Meaning people just sort of uh, uh, listen to his policies and, and let him get away with this stuff, and now it's sort of left us with a legacy of, uh, of, of terror? Exactly. Do you think that owes to people not thinking for themselves, just following the leader? Exactly. Mm hmm Exactly. Hmm. But, I mean, you know, the, 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 the king is dead. Things should be changing right now. Well, let's hope it is. The only way we're going to... I, until I see that, I, I'll, I'll make, I'll decide whether uh -huh. it's whether it's whether it's right whether it's right for me or not. Uh huh. Do you guys uh, make your political views a uh, uh, vocal? Do you like to actually back certain candidates? Well, I, yeah, we do. I mean, we back people that we feel are, are that that see some sort of or vision, or have envisioned some sort of change, or are willing to make some sort of change. I haven't seen anyone yet, but I'm, I'm waiting. Oh, so you guys have never really like openly endorsed uh, candidates? We haven't seen anyone that 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 is that hasn't done that just yet. Uh huh. But you're you're willing to if you do uh, find somebody like that. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Corey. Well, uh, sorry to drag you over the coals a couple times there, but <laughs> hey, it's, it's 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 all in the name of music journalism. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the interview, and uh, wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Message: Rock, black guys. Yeah, sometimes. I mean. Still, I think the, the industry is still waiting to see whether this is just a fluke or whether we're actually serious about it. Hmm. Um, 
you know, that that's why you don't see it. It's, you haven't seen a flood of other um, rock bands of black members, you know. That you you will find bands with mixed members or something like that, but they, they, they have yet to see anything where everybody, the whole band is black. I don't, I don't think the industry the industry is still kind of pensive on that to see if, whether whether it's going to work or not. Based on the uh, response to uh, Times Up, which is, of course is, is still very limited at this time, uh, mm -hmm. w w what do you think? Uh, do, do, have people uh, uh, eschewed the idea of you guys as a fluke? I think this kind of proves to us, at least, that that we have the ability to to do more than just than just what you heard on Vivid, just to show that we have a lot more in our repertoire of things that we do. In, in terms of being a rock band. Mm -hmm. um, actually, there was uh, another question hooked on to the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess the guy expected you to list uh, uh, ver names of very... The music was, was a means by which we could do that. Mm -hmm. how, how about in your own particular case, when did you first start uh, playing music? I've been singing ever since I've been a kid, um, since I was about eight or nine years old. Uh-huh. How about uh, in a band? It's about the same, you know. We've all been... Everyone, you know, like Muzz and Will and myself, all had older brothers that were doing the same things, you know. And they were like the local heroes, the neighborhood heroes, in, in their particular expertise, whereas, you know, Will's brother was a, was a drummer of the block and... Muzzy's brother was older brother was the bass player of the block and my brother was like the singer of the neighborhood so we li had to live up to those expectations and what they and what that was all about um you know we you know and and carry it on whereas Vernon was just was, was influenced by, by I believe it was a, a relative of his who had given him a guitar as an, and at and he just liked the way it sounded and decided to keep playing it. Were you in a band before uh, joining Living Color? No, I wasn't, but the rest of everybody else was. They were gigging professionally. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in basically, like, trying to stop. Okay. Um, it starts out here by noting that uh, a lot of the uh, uh, black artists in America have sort of... Uh, uh, become rather lazy in that they uh, perform nothing but harmless love songs and, and dance music. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you guys have uh, taken somewhat more of an aggressive stance in that you uh, try to get across messages and uh, uh, also I mean, create... Well, there are other artists that are doing that, but you're not hearing a lot about it. Uh -huh. Well, that's that's actually part of the question there. Who well, who do you consider a, a contemporary in that respect? Well, I mean, there's Trace Chapman, of course. You know, there are other bands... They don't don't get the same kind of notoriety that that we might, you know, that aren't even signed. Uh huh. There's a band here in New York called Bluesland. Uh huh. Um, when Mike Hill is the leader, and um, he's doing his version of urban blues. Um, I mean. Who else? I mean, there's so many. It's, it's very difficult to say who isn't Tackhead. You know, all, there are lots of bands that are doing it. But uh, I mean, doesn't your wouldn't your success uh, spur a lot of record companies to to look for that same combination of uh, you know art bands? And, and I was never in a. I was always in like singing groups that never really got out of the like garage basement stage. Never really got a gig. Well, what sort of style uh, were you doing? You know, like stylistic um, Motown stuff. So, Living Color was a real departure from the styles you had actually been, been seeing. Actually, it was exactly what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. that was a de departure. It was exactly what I needed, what, I, what I've been, always wanted to do all my life. Uh -huh. Being a band that, that said something in that was I heard black people saying what they had to say and it was a rock band. Uh huh. Were you always a fan of rock music? Yes, I was. Right. I mean, even from the earliest, the earliest conception of rock music, that a la doo music and stuff from the Platters and the Cleptones and the Penguins. You know, the early reference, black, uh, early reference 
to rock and roll uh-huh. and and progressed forward and backward at the same time whereas I, I wanted to find out where that came from and also wanted to find out where it was going so I found out about Bats Waller and Bessie Smith and, and and at the same time that I was listening to Chuck Berry and Fats Domino and Little Richard and also listening to Hendrix and Cream and Foghat and these bands and then it says here uh, why have uh, so many of these bands uh, uh, appeared on the scene signed or unsigned well, I mean, they're, they're, they come out of a out of a sense that that there's thing, there are things going on in the world, and they have and they're talking. They want to talk about what's going on in their in, in their world. You know, mm-hmm. Just, I mean, it it, it it comes out of a reaction of, of the situations that they live in, as in, as most music is. It's either a, a reflection of them of what they want or a fantasy. Mm-hmm. You know. Hmm. How about your, in your own particular case, when did you uh, uh, find that music was a viable means of uh, expressing that reaction? Well, I don't know any... Uh, the things that I fantasize about are the things that I want, you know, and the things... I mean, we, t- we talk about things that we'd like to see and like to, like to deal with and like to have, but we deal with them on a realistic terms, and, and that's the only way that... that that music becomes truthful, you know. Mm-hmm. You know that's the only way that that we want to speak truthfully about how about what it is we're going through, mm-hmm. and you know, and that and music 